Hey guys, welcome to another video on the Inside Spurs Show. Happy Sunday afternoon. I was about to say morning, apologies. Happy Sunday afternoon. I hope you're well, I hope you're having a good weekend. And uh, look, if you're hungover, I feel for you. Um, if you're not and you're enjoying some good sun, that was a smart decision. We're talking a little bit around uh, our interest in Morgan Gibbs-White, the Nottingham Forest attacker, as well as sort of a bit of an update on Albert Gummonson, the, the winger, striker, a little bit of both. Uh, the player that I talked about from Genoa earlier this week. So I've got a bit of an update as well on him. And um, just want to say though, if you are new, subscribe. You're very much welcome to join us for the journey. And uh, I know you're probably a bit like, gah, Andy's posting on a posting on a Sunday. That doesn't happen. It doesn't. But when there's no international when there's international football and there's no Premier League football, I'm probably gonna post I'm not gonna post as much. But this one I came out of the blue and I thought, why not? Because good lord, if you watched the England game yesterday, it was definitely two hours of your life you wish you got back. Dreadful. Dreadful. Honestly, the the <laughs> quicker this tournament gets over out of the way, and regardless if we win it or we get out of the groups, and the quicker we get a manager in who actually knows how to coach players, the better. The better. And, and if that offends you, I don't care. Let's talk, though, Morgan Gibbs-White. So it came from Peter O'Rourke, who said that Tottenham are keeping close tabs on Nottingham Forest midfield and Morgan Gibbs-White ahead of a summer Move. Uh, sources have told Football Insider, North London club have been scouting the 24-year-old sorry, midfielder regularly this season, as well as multiple scouting missions last season. So, uh, he obviously joins uh, Fulham, uh, not Fulham, uh, Forrest, on a bit of a weird deal. And I believe the deal was something around about £25 million as a guarantee, that's the fee. But the deal could rise to £45 million with add-ons, you know, staying up appearances, all those sort of things that go into an add-ons deal. And a lot of people were up in arms about that. They were like, well, what are they doing that for? That's a rubbish deal. It's, he's, not, he's not even prem proven, blah, 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 blah. And I always said, look, if you end up having to pay the add-ons on a player, it means it's gone well. It means the player's gone well, or you've won things, or you've stayed up, in Forrest's case. That's why it's a, it's a good thing. I will gonna, I'm going to go through his stats in just a second, because I think... There's a key thing to kind of take into account. So just remember that £45 million number that I just said, OK? Let's go through who he is as a profile. And Morgan Anthony Gibbs, why? He's 24 years old, uh, attacking midfield, uh, sort of plays all across sort of the attack. Uh, the contract expires in the summer of 2027. This season, he's played in 33 games across the Premier League, the FA Cup and once in the EFL Cup. He's got four goals and five assists, so call it nine goal contributions. One every three and a half games, we'll call it. Now, a lot of you guys have commented, oh, I really want Gibbs White, I like the look of Gibbs White and, and, and that sort of thing. And I think if you actually look at those stats, you know, four goals, five assists, or let's call it three goals and five assists in the Premier League. If he was in a team with the ability to supply a human son, would he score more? Uh, sorry, would he, would he assist more? Yeah, probably. You know, if he's in a Spurs team where maybe he's not the main focal point like he is at Forest, would he, would he get more opportunities for one-on-one -on -one chances, you know, goals, that sort of... Yeah, maybe. Maybe. It's potential. I'd say Brennan Johnson was probably their best player last season at Forest. And if you don't think Brennan Johnson was the best player last season... It was bloody close, and if you think Morgan Gibbs White was head and shoulders above everyone else in the in the in the in their team, you might want to go back a little watch of Forrester's season last year. Um, so when we think about that forty five million pound mark, and we think, you know, what would he cost? He's got three years left on his contract. You know, Forrest have a ton of power in this situation, and I'm not. By the way, I am talking all hypotheticals. I'm not talking. Are they staying up? Are they going down? Whatever. I'm not doing that. I'm just talking just facts at the moment. You know, three years after his contract, he's, they're going to want more than £45 million, pounds, right? They're going to want £55, £60 million. Pounds. That's my guess, that somewhere between £50 and £60 million. Pounds. So that, let's work on that number, right? And even if you go, there's no way they'd get that, they're going to want £40 million then this is going to actually be a really good test. Think of my 50 to 60 million pound number, that sort of window that, that I think they would take that fee. Would you have him? Would you go elsewhere? Would you want Nico Williams? 
Would you want Ebrey Cheze for 60 million? Would you want Neto for 70 million? I'm interested to see what you think about that because I, I think that's quite a intriguing topic. Now, if they stay up, yeah, they're going to have a lot of power in this. You know, don't get me wrong, they might need to sell players. But if they go down, would they have an would they have the opportunity to kind of get the same fee as they would if they stayed in the Premier League? Maybe not. Maybe they would sell for £40 million. I mean, Leicester got relegated and sold Madison for £40 million. You know, he's their Madison in a weird way. Now, would he be a good fit for Spurs? That's the other question. I think he would be, yeah. I think he would give us an ability to not change our style of play too much. And if we if we did have Madison drop out, and you know, if you wanted to sort of spread Madison around the pitch a bit more, maybe. But I personally would go the Eberich Eze route still. That's where I would be. The guy can play left wing as well as the position of Madison. And that's what I want. I want someone that can play Madison's role, but... He is also somewhere else on the pitch that they can play together. So that's what I'm saying. Let's talk Albert Goodmanson. It came from Alistair Gold, who said that Spurs continuing to show some interest in a potential second transfer raid on Genoa this summer with Albert Goodmanson. And um, I was reading through the article and he, and he sort of touted a fee of somewhere around about 21 to 26 million pounds. So let's call it 25 million pounds, okay? We talked about Rudy Bargy. We talked about Antonio Nusa, okay. We talked about Matthias Suli, who I can't lie, out of the three of them, I might be in the Matthias Suli. I might be in the Matthias Suli camp. I don't know. But anyway, we talk about these guys who are going to cost around about twenty-five to thirty million pounds. That's that little group, okay. Albert Goodmanson is that same sort of group. Now, I normally would go with the whole he's he's a he's a top five proven league, and, and to be honest. With the Serie A, it's a top four. I, I I don't even regard the fifth league as a top five league. I look at it as a top four thing. You know, Bundesliga, Prem, La Liga and Serie A, right? So he's, he, he is top four league proven. And normally that would step him apart from a Bargy or from a, a Noosa. But then you've got Matthias Suli, who's doing it at Frosinone on loan from Juventus. And I just think, Maybe you've got more of a surefire thing with Gummerson because of his age. He's a bit more mature and he's had a really good international break. He scored a hat trick for Iceland. But I also think. He, I, I just think he's one of those. He's got a really high floor, but quite a low ceiling. OK, what I mean by that is. He's worst, maybe better than the other guys is worst. Right. So you might have Nusa, Baji and Sule, who, whose floor is, let's say, here. And Gummerson's floor's here. Well, he's better, right, in that regard. But I also think the upside and the ceiling for those three is higher than Gummerson's ceiling. I think Gummerson can improve a bit more, but I don't see him improving to being like a, an out-and-out, week-in, week-out winger for Spurs. Whereas you look at the other three and you think, they could. Yeah, absolutely, they could start. If things go well, progression goes well, the coaching's right, you know, injuries and all those things, if all things go well... Absolutely, week in, week out of Spurs. That, like, that's why I think you go and get the marquee winger. You go and get the Eze, the Neto, the Williams, whatever it might be. You then sprinkle in that other guy, the Suli, the, the Bargy, the Noosa. Because I still think we need two wingers. But if you bring in a winger who isn't, you're not expecting greatness straight away from them. And, and this is the thing with Brennan Johnson. I don't think we were expecting him to play so much so soon. It was just the way of the the land, really, that he had to play. And I think next season he will be better. But these guys, I think, have that opportunity as well. You know, Johnson will be settled. Kulu's there. You're going to have, you know, maybe an Eze or a Neto. <laughs> you might have a Werner, potentially. You might then go, cool, we've got a Solomon, but we'll see what happens there. The other winger, who then can kind of float. And then you've got these guys who can float between positions. Kulu can drop into the midfield. There's always that regard. Everich Eze could, you know. Neto could probably play as a strike if you truly needed him to, you know. Um, Matthias Sule can kind of play in, in a central role and outside, you know. So these are all the things that I've just kind of been thinking about. And I'm interested to see what you guys think. But yeah, Goodmanson for me is not... But you know, both of those guys, I like them. But they wouldn't be near the top of my list. I think that's fair. You can think they're good players. But you maybe don't think they're exactly right for Spurs. For many a reasons. 
I'm interested to see what you guys think about that. But anyway, guys, then the video. I hope you enjoyed. Drop a like on the video if you did. Hit me in the comment section like your thoughts and feelings about Gibbs White, about Goodmanson, all that jazz. I want to know your thoughts and feelings. Obviously, subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification for more. Enjoy the rest of your Sundays. I hope you really do enjoy it. Forget about what's coming tomorrow. Enjoy it. And anyway, guys, then a video. I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.